hello. How are you today? I'm so glad that most of you picked up and stopped by today. The one thing I haven't done, well, first I'll remind you that I'm Eloise and I'm the storyteller. But, you know, usually I wear a mask just to remind everybody, you know, that we need those. We need to have them and to put them on for safety. But I've got other things in the background here that you're going to love, and they don't require a mask. So we'll get on with that. Today, we're going to do a new thing. There are two guests, and the title, if you want to have a title for this, is that we'll be looking back and looking forward at the Equal Rights Amendment something that's very important to women and is certainly very important to the three of us that are here together. Uh, but don't forget your mask, promise. All right, so we're going to start. We have women who were involved with the Equal Rights Amendment before you're probably thinking about it very much. It was in the 70s. I got started in the 70s, and I didn't know anything about it, uh, whatever. I was in college. I was a mommy, a 30-year-old mommy going to college, and I learned a lot when I was there. I learned so much by being told that it would be better for me if I joined the National Organization for Women, and I would learn there. And I learned through the consciousness-raising gatherings of eight women at a time to talk about problems, to learn that stuff. And that's how you learn what you really wanted to know about the Equal Rights Amendment. It comes to the place where it really seeps in and informs you as to what you need to know to have equality when you're trying to lead your life. We'll hear more about that. I'm really thrilled that Susan Hurst, who is currently the president of the Maryland State BPW, Business and Professional Women, she's with us. And the other person that's with us is Jeanette Fessner. Now, Jeanette, I always say that wrong. Feldner. Feldner. And she's the president of the Montgomery County chapter of now for us and they've got a lot to say in this month the first things that are going to be said about uh equal rights amendment and the first question that this is susan hello susan hello good to see hello. you jeanette yeah and this is Jeanette. I'm happy to see everyone here, too. And I hope you learn a lot about the Equal Rights Amendment. It's near and dear to our hearts. Yes. Yes, that's wonderful. Um, OK, so what we're talking about, the question I thought about that I really wanted to ask you and maybe other people would want to know from the two of you. We'll start with Susan. Susan, why did you get involved with this? You've been involved with it for a long time with trying to pass, you know, things that are legal for women. Well, what made you do that? Well, first of all, I didn't know anything about ERA at all. I grew up in a rural area and most of the news was local news and I didn't have much exposure to national news, much less about women marching for equal rights in Washington, DC. So, I, I mean, I learned about it by joining BBW. I had experienced uh, pay discrimination. I had uh, been told in my first job interview that they didn't hire women, that women would distract the men. And I really didn't know anything about the ERA until I moved to Montgomery County after graduate school and I joined business and professional women. And that's when I learned women were not in the constitution, except for the 19th amendment, granting women the right to vote. So I became passionate about that. And BPW has been an advocate for the ERA since 1937. So since I joined in the mid 80s, it's always been first and foremost at the top of our legislative platform. Terrific. Now that's really very, gives us quite the symbol of how this has been, but it's a long time, isn't it? It is. 
Yeah. How did you get involved, Jeanette? Well, uh, I was a child of the late 60s, early 70s, when there was a lot going on in this country. Um, the anti-war movement and the environmental movement with Earth Day and and women's rights. And um, so I was a young woman and it just made perfect sense to me. I mean, women are equal to men. I mean, I certainly felt equal to all of my male friends. Um, uh, but I was labeled quickly as a women's liver and kind of ridiculed in my family. Um, but uh, I I found out about the National Organization for Women and um, I joined, I went to some meetings and I found out about this thing called the Equal Rights Amendment and they were, uh, and I was like, well, sure, I'm for that. So I, um, I um, signed up, I went on marches. Um, I, you know, paid attention. I did what I could uh, at the time. Uh, and uh, when, when it, I mean, I, I went all the way to, through it's getting in in 72 and then getting out, you know, I mean, in 82 and I cried and anyway, uh, that's how I got into it. Um, I just felt in my heart that it was the right thing that women are equal to men, not superior as they feared we wanted we're not wanting superiority we want equality well it's really some a, a feeling that stays with you forever doesn't it mm -hmm. um i personally was a, in my 30s had the children and everything i was looking for a job and um things were happening that you spoke up you know women strive for peace other things that are going on and I was in this college, but I wanted to be part of the bigger world, not to just read about it, but to walk with it, to be downtown, to talk with it, to meet those women. And as, as I did it and met more people and whatever, uh, it captured me, you know, because there was something so wonderful about being with people with strong opinions and wishing to do things and getting it done. Um, the day I think that had the biggest impact on me, and maybe it did on you too, was in 1978. And it was a march down on the mall to try to get the Congress to give us three more years. We had not made it the first time around that three more years to give us another chance to pass the Equal Rights Amendment. And the day that we were on the street down there was something happened in my heart, in my soul. Everybody was dressed in white. They were walking down. You know, it was just incredible as our group, I was with a group of artists. And as they we came around the corner, this working man called out and said, what is it, babes, with that white? And so we looked at each other and said, it's for the mothers of us that got us the vote. And that was really what was happening, I think. I know it's what was happening to me. So I did get a job with the League of Women Voters as the director of their campaign to pass the Equal Rights Amendment. Now, we don't have to talk that anymore because we did pass it. It was a hard job. And the thing that Susan talks about being at uh, EPW, there was a woman on ERA America who were the groups that really helped try to get that ERA done. And she saw immediately when she met me that this poor woman doesn't know what she's doing. She just has the job. And so she decided that she would help me to teach me what I needed to know so that I could do the job to really help push. This was the most wonderful, wonderful person I've ever known and the smartest. And I happen to know that Susan knew her too. Didn't yes. she? Yes, you're talking about Marilyn Heath and she was a member of Ohio BPW. She was a great mentor to many of us. And she actually served as the ERA representative for the Ford and Carter administrations. And she was uh, quite a force 
she's no longer with us, but she touched a lot of lives and she taught a lot of us about ERA. So, uh, you know, one, one year I was able to give a participate in a speech competition for BPW at the national conference. And I spoke about the Equal Rights Amendment. And when I finished that speech, she came down off of there and she was so excited that I got it right. And so uh, she was happy to pass the torch because I was the next generation talking about the Equal Rights Amendment. And um, the important thing is that we understand that we need the 28th Amendment because there are so many other laws on the books that could be overturned tomorrow. And all the protections we've worked for all these years could be overturned by the next Congress. So that's why we need to have it enshrined in the Constitution. Absolutely. Now, Jeanette, one thing I learned as we were going, it was going along, was what I said earlier about, you know, women teaching women and some of that coming out of now. Did you experience that when you joined now and were working with them, that uh, we were in the business to help each other? Sure. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Being among like minds, like sex, I mean, being in a group of women because it was all about being married and having a husband or, you know, um, you know, we were second class citizens at the time, you know. Um, so to be around other women who were finding their power and then helping every we were helping to raise each other up. And um, and in raising each other locally, you know, build a national, you know, momentum and, and now as a chapter organization. So, you know, each chapter was involved in the state chapter and then in the national organization and being here in DC, of course, we have close access to the organization too. So I, you know, once I joined, I've just, I, I've, I just really enjoy groups of women. <laughs> BPW as well. I'm a member there too. <laughs> I'm a member of now. <laughs> women together. It's the best. It's women the best. helping women. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Isn't it wonderful once they get started for you and you sort of realize it and then there's no getting away from that. I don't think, I think that, you know, it's with us forever. Thank gosh. And um, we're now, I'm getting a signal from Rachel that we're going to take just a little bit of breathing time here uh, because there's something coming up that will come up later. We will come immediately back and maybe we should take a look at this was what uh, was then. What's now? What is now? So we'll talk to you later and talk about that. It's the new thing. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. Come on, Jules, spot on this last one. Uh, there it is. Keep going with it. Leo! <laughs> they're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Well, we're back, and I'm glad, and I know that all of y'all are back, too, because there are things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about, first, what we think and what we know and what's happening. And one of the things is that so many times I've heard people say that they thought that they were safe that we hadn't made the, the Equal Rights Amendment, but they thought that we had all these laws that over all these years, they had been gone through the Senate, through the House, and that they were lost and nobody could take it away. Let me tell you one thing, they can. Those laws can be taken away only under the Equal Rights Amendment can they be protected. And what Jeanette is saying is some other ways of looking at this. What do yeah, you I would, I would, I would encourage people to um, learn about the Equal Rights Amendment, and the way that you can do that is through women's. Well, you can Google anything, <laughs> but uh, join up with some women's organizations like Now, the National Organization for Women. Uh, there are chapters all over the place. Uh, there's one here in Montgomery County. Uh, we have a state chapter. Um, 
the BPW. Um, they're all over Maryland, um, all over the country. And we've all been fighting for the Equal Rights Amendment for a long time. We've got a lot of history and, um, and activism and, you know, we do, we go lobbying. Um, so get involved with us. And also as far as women's rights until we get the Equal Rights Amendment, find out what your local legislation is doing, your local legislators, the county council, the state legislation, um, who your Congress people are, senators uh, at the national level. Be aware of who they are. And when you hear about legislation coming up, write to them, call them, you know, be involved, be active. And um, Susan or I can help you with that. So <laughs> thank you. Didn't I hear some talk a minute before you talk, Susan, you're going to read the what the ERA is says when it's yeah, a lot of shirt. <laughs> yeah. No, a lot of people think that we already have the Equal Rights Amendment. And it's a very simple statement. It just simply says, equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. Um, Alice Paul wrote that in 1923 and she died in 1977. Very sad that we had not achieved ratification. So Congress passed it in 1972. Uh, we had 10 years to get it ratified by 38 states. We only had 35, so it kind of went dormant for 40 years. Then Nevada, Illinois, and Virginia ratified it. And uh, Virginia was the last one just last year. Now we're still waiting on the archivist to um, certify that. And of course, that person isn't able to do it because there is this arbitrary time limit put on it. So that's what Senator Cardin's bill is trying to do is lift the time limit so that we can still go forward with this. Tell us a little bit about uh, Mr. Cardin and that he's from Maryland and what he's done for this uh, thing. Well, Senator Cardin has been a, a great proponent for the Equal Rights Amendment. And he and Representative Jackie Spear had, um, well, you have to vote every year. The Congress has to vote every year on this. So he uh, actually submitted this resolution day one of this, this 117th Congress. So. We're very grateful to him for his continued support. You know, I like the wonderful you're saying that. The thing that crossed through my mind as you were talking about that is the persons I haven't heard people talk about. Now, I'm not in some groups I used to be, but you do this for your daughters. That during the ca campaign for the Equal Rights Amendment in the 70s before we lost in 82, we were trying to re turn things around is what is going to be the best for your daughter as you go forward. And believe it or not, it wasn't enough to help get it, but we did change enough so that people were beginning to look strange at the walls and say, that's the truth. That's the truth. It's not who's in my bedroom. It's how's my daughter getting along? What do you think about that? Did you hear that during those days? I haven't heard it recently. I don't, I don't remember hearing that, but when you were saying that, I was thinking, and now it's for our granddaughters. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yes. But, um, you know, I have heard many male legislators when they get up, they say, well, I have a wife, I have a mother, I have a sister, I have a daughter, you know, I, you know, it's, but it's, it's not just for the women, it's for the men too. Um, you know, it's, it's for all of us to be equal, equal pay. I mean, if, if everyone were equal, it would take some of that burden off of men to be the, the, the macho, you know, I've, I've got to do everything. I, I, I don't think it's really that way so much with the, the new generation, the younger generation now, but they just don't realize that, that it's, you know, it could slip away very easily. And we really need to get this done into the constitution to preserve the rights that, that they have now and, you know, going forward for their children, for their families. Well, you know, I thought it was just really exciting when uh, Ms. Ledbetter stepped up 
you know, when uh, President Obama was first inaugurated, you know, and he passed that, they signed the bill and she had the bill, but everybody knew that it wasn't forever, mm -hmm. that it could be taken away at any time. And how long do you think it took her to sign it, to get it? You know, it had been years to get it and now she could, you know, have some change and it could be taken away. For that. And, she never, and she never even got the equal pay that she deserved all those years. She fought for it. She sacrificed for it, but she never got reimbursed. Really like that. Send them the check. <laughs> well, it's, it's only been 234 years since the Constitution was originated. And we've been waiting a long time. And there are a lot of people that are misinformed. There are a lot of myths. I mean, I just remember back in the 70s and 80s, people would say, oh, well, women would have to share bathrooms with men. Well, do you fly on a plane? Uh, or women would have to go to war. Well, we don't have the draft anymore. Women are already in combat and mostly they were kept out so they couldn't get the equal pay. But there are so many reasons to vote for it now that don't exist anymore. I mean, we want to have equal pay. We want to have equal rights. Why should you pass piecemeal legislation in all the states that may or may not follow those laws? Let's just do it in one fell swoop and take care of it with the Constitution. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful? <laughs> it would be absolutely. Yes. Uh, and I think that, uh, Jeanette, that's what you said when you sent me the little thing. Uh, tell everybody again what you were saying about your bio that you wanted to see what? I wanna see this, uh, the Equal Rights Amendment passed into law in my lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hope to live a long time, but I don't wanna wait that long. And you know, life is short, let's get it done now. <laughs> That's right, That's right. Is there anything else that you have to say, Susan? No, I just wanted everybody to be aware and learn about all the wonderful events that are going on this month for Women's History Month. And there's a lot to learn, men and women, and especially teach the young people that we still don't have equal rights under the law because so many believe they do until they get to that job and find out how they're discriminated against. Well, what I'm really excited about, thrilled, thrilled with that you're here and that the station has been so wonderful. Melissa, you know, our manager, you know, has been so wonderful because there's, this is the first in a series of three programs talking about the Equal Rights Amendment and what it's gonna mean. And, you know, from the back and today. And I'm thrilled, you know, to be seeing this and hearing it uh, you know, that it's, it's a wonderful thing that's happening. And I hope that it just starts people thinking about it enough to pass their vote for it whenever it comes back. What's your last guess? Last guess? Yeah, it's something that's, that's on your mind, but you haven't said it yet. Oh, oh, wow. You know, I, I don't know. I was just thinking about Gloria Steinem. <laughs> She's my Shiro. And she, when she uh, dressed up as a Playboy bunny and infiltrated Hugh Hefner's bunny clubs and then wrote a revealing article about it, about how women were treated. I mean, that that's the kind of thing that kind of brought the Equal Rights Amendment notoriety and popularity and and it's like we need to make some changes that's just one story there's a million of them out there so um just you know keep fighting we we we've got to take care of each other we we must be sisters all of us well that's it isn't it the sisterhood yes and i think that's what came to me and to many others and it kept on and on through now and the consciousness raising and everything. If you sit around and talk about your real life with eight people that you don't know, and they become your sister because mm -hmm. they're the ones you can turn to when you need it. And women have that capacity, you know? So I hope that it's still out there, that wonderful help, that there are many, many, many more 
Peace, women. And for the men who love us, because we have great supporting partners. We want everyone to be supportive of the Equal Rights Amendment because it will benefit all. Nonpartisan, totally nonpartisan. Right, right. This has been so wonderful, so fun, and it will be on for two or three weeks. It'll be coming up out there on the station. We'll send the thing around. And this is talking about then, but you're bringing in the now and what we hope is being happening out there now. Thank you, Susan Hurst, and thank, thank you, Jeanette. I'm not Feldner. gonna be able to say it. <laughs> Feldner. Feldner, Feldner. I practice all night long. It's I, okay. I, I can't I, say your last name either. <laughs> very well. But you can, yeah. oh, so good God. to be here. Oh, thank you for inviting us. Oh, please, we'll, we'll do this again. No equal rights amendment. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs>